Hello everybody, and this is Joe Dierte. Today we are playing Homebrew Vehicle Sandbox, and that is a very strange car. Nice. But that's the whole point of this game, though. Build whatever you can think of. So today, I'm going to be showing you guys something I've been working on, and I am still in the process of perfecting it, but I would like to show you guys anyway, because I know a lot of people have been having questions on how to build these. So, I'm going to spawn in my rock crawler that I had made. Boom. There it is. So, yeah, this looks like a pretty, you know, run-down, kind of half-ass vehicle, but we hop inside of it. Starter up. You'll notice I'm not actually shifting this. This has the automatic transmission that I have made and it works extraordinarily well and I made it so that I can maximize the amount of torque that these really kind of underpowered engines put out especially when I'm going rock crawling up here a mountain and such um, but yeah so I think I'm going to show you guys how exactly I built this. So if we hop out and head off into the builder and open up our project and there she is in all of her glory and four wheel steering awesomeness. So we're going to head over to the tuner and yes I know I have a mumbled mess of crap over here. I am not very organized when it comes to the tuner, but this is not what you should be focusing on. This is what you should be focusing on. This, in not this. I, I don't know why this is even here. It's not even hooked up. This is the automatic transmission in all of its glory. And it's, it's small. I mean, it's very. It was very easy to do once you figured it out. All you, all I really needed to do was just get some general knowledge on these if logic boxes. So as you can see, I have three if logic boxes. I have one shift box, one value box, and one combined box. Oh, I also have one toggle box as well. I forgot about that. And this toggle box is just so I can toggle my reverse. So enough talking about it. Why don't we show you exactly how it works? So, fire up the engine. You'll notice on this shift box right here, it is saying we are in sixth gear. And we are in sixth gear. So, but you'll notice once these RPMs go down, this, these values start changing. That's because I have over here in this value box that once we get above a certain RPM, 2100 for example, then we're going to shift up, and once we get below 850, we're going to shift down. So, let's show, this, let's show you guys how exactly I did this. So I made a value box, and I put four values in there. Um, firstly, I started up the engine, and I fired it up, and put it on Meeks, Mac, Meeks. What am I doing? I am completely tongue-tied right now. I put it to max RPM and figured out that this engine outputs um, 2,200 RPM for its max max RPM. So I thought to myself, when, when exactly do I want to shift this? So I have this set to shift at 2,100 RPM and to shift up, no, down, I should say, at 850 RPM. And these are all handled in these if logic boxes. And the way these work is there is an A value and a B value. And these are all inputted by whatever you can think of in this game. Like you can, anything that's blue here, as an output on the right hand side of these boxes, anything that's blue can be put into these, as you can see. I don't want that there though. Um, so I have mine outputted, well, inputted the output of the RPM output slot on this engine and I could even go over here into this to this e-power motor I mean this thing revs to like a, 
what 10,000 RPMs or something like that so this wouldn't exactly work very well but I'd have to modify these values but it would work um, so I have A set to the RPM output and B set to the value box output um, on output 1 so 2100 so basically if A is greater than or equal to B which is 2100 I want you to output one and I have one set right here so you'll notice once I fire it up once the RPMs get above this it outputs one because A is greater than B and then once A is no longer greater than B it's no longer outputting one we head on over here to the other if logic box this is my downshift box um, essentially the same thing I have A hooked up to the whoops come on uh, the RPM output, I have B hooked up to the downshift point, 850, and I said if A is less than B, because I want the transmission to shift, when the engine RPMs are less than a certain point, then I want you to output 1. And that's I'm just choosing 1 because that's what usually these boxes go off of. Um, it, it's a boolean basically, 1 being true and 0 being false. So, you'll notice that right now this is 1 because the engine RPM right now is 0, and 0 is obviously less than 850, so it's outputting 1. So right here on the upshift box, the output is set to the increment on the shift box because when you go above the certain RPM, we want to increment that... Um, and this is basically the buffer. Um, so this is basically the transmission that's not the transmission. I mean, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't make sense. You get what I mean. Um, th this holds the value that we will be setting. So right now we should be in first gear. And this is sixth gear. So on and so forth. So this is one through six right here. And the transmission only takes whole numbers. So... If this says 2.8 or 4.7 or whatever, it's just gonna it's gonna delete that decimal point and it's just gonna make it a whole number, which is why this works so well. Um, I have the downshift box hooked up to the decre the decrement um, input of the shift box. Um, then you need to go over here to your bucket seat or whatever seat that you have. And you need to make a spot for reverse. I made mine R. You can make yours whatever you want. But I just, for ease of use, I'm going with R. Um, wire that up to the toggle box that you've made. And this other if box that's over here, I want you to wire the toggle box up to the B input and the shift box up to the A input. Basically what this is saying is if the vehicle is in first gear, then you will allow it to shift into reverse. So it will not shift into reverse unless you are in at least first, well at most first gear. So you can't shift into reverse at second gear, only first gear. So right now, we press R, it shifts and it, it, it will output negative one because it's what we have over here as A equals B, and 1 does equal 1. So you'll notice if we go into 6th gear and try to shift into reverse, it does not display negative 1. Now if we keep this toggled and go down to 1st gear, it will now display negative 1, and it will reverse. So, now that we have reverse and the transmission gearing set up on the shift box and logic box, this is where the combined box comes in. Take the output of the shift box and put it on the input of the combined box. Then take the output of the if logic box for reverse and also put it in the combined box. So this right here is the this is the gear that the transmission will be in, including reverse. So if you include reverse, we're in zero, and zero for the transmission is negative one. So a negative one being reverse. 
So there's that. And that was a little spawn lag. Um, and then we got reverse on. We're in sixth gear. Reverse doesn't work. Take reverse off. Still nothing. Go into first gear. Hit reverse. And we have reverse. So that is that. Yeah. So it's a lot easier than... Um, then you hype it up to be, I guess I should say. Um, I know there's a lot of there's a lot of boxes and a lot of items in this game that can be frustrating. Um, I know I still have a lot of difficulties and frustration, or at least impatience, with paneling my vehicles, like this guy over here has done. If I can pan around, oh, no, there he is. Yeah, sodium hydroxide over here. See, he's got that beautiful paneling on the side, and I am just so impatient that I don't like doing that. Um, I like doing the more in the more in intricate stuff. So, that is, in a nutshell, how you build an automatic transmission. And I hope you got some. Uh, I hope you got some information on how to use if logic boxes, so you can go off and make your own little doodads, like say retract the landing gears after you get to a certain point. Oh, nice Lamborghini. You got that from the workshop. Um, so you can retract your landing gears when you get to a certain speed or you can do whatever. I mean the space sky's the limit in this game. Literally do whatever you want with the amount of items and materials that they have provided in this game plus the update that's supposed to be happening here pretty soon providing a lot more items and materials this game is going to be phenomenal and it already is and you can play online with people and it's just I just love this game um, I'll even show you this thing that I've built here pretty recently this is the little propeller airplane I've been working on and as I said I don't like doing paneling so that's why it looks like crap but it works so you start the engine like so, and the propellers go to peak RPM immediately, and the throttle is essentially just feathering the props, so in increasing or decreasing the blade angle on these propellers. So hit the throttle, and the uh, blade angle increases, providing you with thrust, and voila, and... I mean, look just how beautiful this thing handles. I absolutely love it. And there's something else I did with the game. I mean, the, the if logic boxes that um, I showed you for the autopilot, well, not autopilot, but the automatic transmission, I kind of put it on autopilot. Um, if I press the down button, it kind of sort of levels out the plane. Um, so I can take off autopilot. I can be going like this. I'm not going to touch the controller, I'm just going to cross autopilot, and it'll bring me, it'll pitch it back down to neutral, approximately neutral. And, I mean, I still have some work to do to it, that's why it still says negative two degrees, but, I mean, it, come on, it, it works. It, it works well. So, alright guys, well, I hope you guys learned something from this video, and if you have any questions, leave me in the comments, and I will see you guys in game. Enjoy your building.